Hi everybody, this is Jared from Brickhouse Media Co. I'm the founding director. There's my website and company. Um, I'm out in Oakland, California, and what we do is we create multimedia services for experts, professionals, thought leaders, emerging startups, um, founders, and any organizations that really want to get involved with media and online media. We provide a value-driven platform, holistic services. Um, it's really a customized model for businesses who want to get involved online with email marketing and web marketing. They're just not quite sure how to do it. Um, so today we're going to be talking about how to optimize your YouTube channel for your website. Um, and just YouTube is an amazing resource. It's the number two search engine other than Google. It's owned by Google. So when you search a topic nowadays, you get a video as a answer to your search. So what you wanna do is really optimize your channel. You wanna ideally be getting subscribers. You wanna be getting people who can follow you. The beauty of getting subscribers, other than just posting a video to your website, is that people can follow you. And as soon as you post a video on YouTube, they will get an email from YouTube it basically says you just posted a new video so that's why it's nice that way you won't get spammed um, you'll also have other videos in that email from YouTube so subscribers is really the key that's why we're gonna be leveraging YouTube and also SEO and search just critical things critical things you want to do for your marketing and I recommend it for everybody to have a YouTube channel even if you just have one video on it that talks about what you do and who you are professionally um, just so you know, this is one of our first Periscopes, so um, be uh, patient and be understanding. So again, I'm Jared from Breakhouse Media Company, the founding director, and today we're going to be talking about the top ways to optimize YouTube for your channel. Um, this is based around a post we did from Buffer, Buffer.com, the blog. It's an amazing resource. We love it. And thank you for Bree Simon, uh, Simone. Um, so let's dive right in and the first thing I want to talk to you about is basically the channel art You can customize the header your brand and you really should ch customize that channel it's So obvious to me when I go to someone's page if they haven't customized the channel that they're kind of rookies on YouTube and marketing um, It's a great way to brand your channel. It's a great way to be involved um, I'm gonna hold something fun so you guys can have something visual to kind of look at also other than my silly face a little squeezy thing will be fun um, I'll, I'll keep playing with other things so I want you to find um, a branded image very long uh, horizontal panoramic for your channel art um, if you contact me I'll send you the actual dimensions um, for YouTube they recommend this weird layout of um, banner size it's really wacky yeah Bree, you've had that too um, it's tough, I gotta say. I, I'm a Photoshop guy and they do not make it easy to create um, YouTube channel art. Um, but I do recommend, if you have any questions, email me. I'll send you the, the, um, the dimensions for YouTube channel art. Basically, you wanna kinda put it right in the middle of a, let's say it's an eight and a half, 11 page. It's gonna go right in the middle and it's gonna look best on web. Don't forget, some people do view your videos on TVs, like smart TVs. They say that they're optimizing it for that. I don't know many people that are doing that. I have a Roku TV and I barely ever use the YouTube channel. So find a banner, put your website in the banner, put your tagline in the banner, put an attractive image or a logo or a fun graphic in the banner. Um, now remember the banner and the icon are two separate things. The icon is related to Google Plus, your Google Plus profile. And remember, you can have a Google Plus profile that's different from your business YouTube channel okay those are two separate things I've got a variety of channels and a variety of um, Google Plus profiles really um, so don't forget you can create a channel that's separate from your Google Plus and that could be your business and that could be separate so definitely customize the icon the icon could be you personally could be your company logo if you go to our page or just go to YouTube and search BH Media Co you'll see the way we've laid out our page the profile is just our icon, it's just our avatar symbol, it's this symbol, a little brick with the, um, the color play button. And then on the header image, we've got the, the company name, we've got the website, our value proposition, and a little bit more about us. And so that's why I really recommend you customize that header, it's really critical to do. So let's dive in a little bit deeper, if you wanted the size. YouTube recommends uh, 2560 
by 1440 image. That's the total image that's gonna show up full size on TV. But really that main little banner image is gonna be 1546 by 423 pixels. So that's gonna be this long banner that goes right in the middle of the page. Um, I'm gonna show you what it looks like here. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. So there you go, right in the middle, you can see that it's right there in the middle of the image, and that's the area I really want you to focus on. That is the key area that's gonna show up on web, and I think that's really the critical part you wanna show on, and I've seen most channels focusing on that area. So again, the whole image is 2560 by 1440 pixels, the whole image, but the main center area that you wanna do the crosshairs in is 1546 by 423 pixels, okay? Text and logo safe area, they call it, okay? And Canva and PicMonkey and Fiverr designers can help you create those. If you have any questions, you can just email me. It's Jared, J-A-R-D, J-A-E, sorry, J-A-R-E-D at bhmedia.co, not .com. The next thing you wanna do is create a trailer. So similar to like a movie trailer, you're not getting the full video, you're not getting the full movie, you're getting a trailer. So under two minutes, I recommend, even under a minute if you can, introduce people to your channel. Why are you sharing these videos? What's important? Why should they subscribe? I love Jimmy Kimmel's, and I also love all the late night talk show guys trailers. They're perfect, they're really short and sweet. Um, it can be you just talking. So definitely create a trailer. I recommend you create two trailers if you're a big uh, YouTube person and you wanna create a lot of videos. One is for new subscribers who have no idea who you are. So introduce yourself and why they should maybe subscribe to you. Then you can create a second trailer that's for returning people. So maybe an update, um, what you've been up to, what recently videos you produced. But at a minimum, create one trailer, introduces your channel, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about how you kinda of go into the settings and show where to show that trailer to new subscribers, it's really important. So, a couple things on why to create a good trailer. Um, the viewer has never heard of you, so you need to introduce yourself, it's like your business card. You wanna keep it short, under two minutes for sure, under a minute is ideal. Um, you wanna hook viewers in the first few seconds, 10 seconds. What's awesome about your videos? Why should they subscribe to you? Some keywords, so drop some keywords like marketing, transformation, uh, multimedia, those are some things we would jump in so people are like, okay, those are the hot words that we wanna follow. Um, show them, don't tell them. So if you can show any clips or some media clips that you've got in other videos, cut that into your video. If you're not super editing savvy, which I totally understand, it's a lot of skills, then definitely just talk about it, but make it really short, under a minute then, if you're gonna talk about it only. And then ask them to subscribe very quickly, and then use the annotations, and we're gonna talk about that um, when you're editing your video about annotations. So ask them directly, say subscribe, even point to the button, like where they should subscribe. It's typically down or to the left, or just, just go subscribe here, and uh, people can follow you and subscribe. Um, there's tons of great trailers. I recommend looking at the, night, uh, the late night talk show hosts. They do great trailers for their channel. And it's a great way to just introduce people to your channel. So definitely, definitely follow it. Um, laying out your content. So we're gonna talk about this a little bit. So let's say you have 10 videos, and let's say there are a variety of topics. You wanna to basically create a playlist. So a playlist is a group of topics, a group of videos around one topic. So for us, we have testimonial videos right now, and we have some general services, and we're gonna be adding more videos on general marketing ideas. So definitely create a playlist. What is the value of the playlist? So everyone has watched a video on YouTube, and when you watch a video, what happens at the end? You come to this multi-screen, and about nine different videos show up at the end of your video. Now if you create a playlist, the video that will play after your first video will be your next video, and then your next video. So people don't get distracted. That's the beauty of the playlist. They go from one video, and it goes right into the next video, and then right into the next video. Then once that whole playlist ends, if they watch them all, then they will get the nine squares of all these other videos on YouTube. Some related, some yours hopefully, but they won't be distracted and leave your channel. So that's the really awesome thing about a playlist. People can also subscribe to your playlist. 
um, which is kind of fun. And then they can get more videos. So the way that you do that is you edit your channel on the homepage. It's a little bit specific. You can email me for ideas. It's J-A-R-E-D at bhmedia.co. And you can find out why people would want... Yeah, thanks, Bree. Um, you can find out why people would want to create a playlist um, and how to do it. You actually go into the settings and you say, choose a playlist and you organize your home channel. Basically, you can customize that home channel a lot. You can make it look the way you want it to look. It doesn't have to look like YouTube default and the way it just comes through. Okay, so that's a little bit about playlist. Um, you want to create it around a series of videos. Um, if you have a variety of videos that don't really match, then maybe you don't do the playlist. But you probably should try to do a theme and do it that way. Uh, you need to have a verified account, which means you need to link it to your uh, website. And that takes a little bit of code and that takes a little bit of verification. You can do it through GoDaddy or your web provider. Um, I'm really glad you've learned so much already, Bree. Thank you. Uh, this is only our second Periscope video. It's kind of fun. Um, it can One video cannot be in more than one official playlist, just so you know. You have to pick one playlist. And they can only be your videos and you have to have the rights to them. You can't add other videos to your playlist. Um, and you can set an official series for the playlist. There's a lot of different settings, but just basically try creating one playlist. Um, when you're in the editing features, you can say add to playlist or create a new one. So that's a great way to go info and editing um, in the video manager. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is creating a thumbnail. So a thumbnail is that custom image. Again, you have to have a certain number of subscribers and followers and a verified channel before you can create a custom thumbnail. So the thumbnail is what people see when they're just looking at a variety of videos. Um, it does not have to be, what, again, what YouTube selects as the default image for your video. And I recommend that you don't use that because often it gets people like this. As they're talking, it's not very favorable. So I always try to customize our videos. Um, I use Photoshop. 1920 by 1080 is standard HD resolution. Again, 1920 by 1080 pixels. That's the default you want to create. You could also take a screenshot of your video and then put graphics over it. Um, here's one we created. I'm going to show you a little one we created. Um, there's our client, Paul, and we added the logo here. We added the text and a little graphic at the bottom. So that really helped. Um, Okay, sorry, I'm getting a little bit of uh, tags coming through. So you want to basically get your brand name in there, get your logo in there. You can put a hashtag in there, but it has to be an attractive image that really grabs people. Look at what other people's videos are doing and see what grabs them. Try to get the most uh, high peak point energy. Um, you can use stock photography or other photography to grab people, but it should be something that's going to be in the video coming back. Um, so good marketing. You want an attractive image. You want to grab people. So definitely try to find something that's emotional. It's exciting. Grabs the eye. Um, some words, very few words, um, especially you're going to share it back to Facebook because Facebook has that rule of 20%. 20% um, images on Facebook, remember. 20% uh, text. So you want to be careful that you don't put too much text on it if you're going to share it back to um, Facebook. Facebook's got this crazy advertising rule where you can have 20% text on your image. Otherwise, they will not allow you to advertise the image, which is super frustrating. Another topic. Don't want to talk about that now. Um, so you want to make it enticing. You want to make it attractive. A little bit of a tease, a little bit of a what's to come, a little bit of a wow. Um, try to use imagery that's really out of your video. Though. I really recommend that. But you can get creative with that. Um, look at other videos, see what other people are doing and what's working. A little bit of a tease, a little bit of a pitch of the benefit of why they should watch this video is really cool. Uh, you don't have to give it all away. You can leave a little curiosity. You can make some caps, some lowercase with the title. Um, so that's the next thing we're going to be talking about is the description. Okay, so the description. Most people don't even look that there's a text description underneath your video. And the nice thing is that will link to Google and that will get searched and that will be in your SEO for your video. So I do recommend you actually put some text in there. I always put our link to our homepage. I always put our tagline. 
Now I'll talk a little bit about the video, a short paragraph. I'll put links into Facebook and Tumblr and Twitter in that description area. Um, it is actually an underutilized space. Most people just kind of forget that it's there. Um, it has some backend SEO value, um, some search value that people will see if they are going a little bit deeper into your channel. So I do recommend you use that. Um, put URLs in there, but do the HTTP semicolon slash slash um, for any URLs you're going to put in the description um, of your video. Again, link to Twitter, link to Facebook, link to your social channels. Um, include a subscribe here link inside the description. Back to YouTube. Even though there's a big red button to subscribe right there. Um, social media channels, you can share other videos in there if you want. And then choose a category for your video. And that's like people, business, environment, fun, celebrity stuff. Um, I found that the categories are a little limited, just so you know. Um, think in reverse always whenever you're doing keywords. What would the user be um, thinking about? What would people be searching for? So you want to add those kind of keywords into your tags and into your description. So think like the user. What are the words they would be searching for when they're going to be searching videos? So if they don't know you and your name's not very popular yet, don't use your name as the main thing. Leverage um, how to create great YouTube videos and drop keywords just like you would in a Google AdWords type campaign. Okay, just a reminder, my name's Jared. Um, I'm the founder of BH and Brickhouse Media Company out in Oakland, California. Um, we help professionals and business professionals transform into experts online via custom multimedia services. So our website is bhmedia.co, not .com. We don't like the .coms anymore. No, just kidding. Um, create a call to action with your video. So the tags. The tags are the actual SEO keywords you want to think about. So I really want you to consider what are those keywords you should be using. I put the tags in the description and I put them in the tags. You can actually create a Word doc um, just with commas. So multimedia, comma, photography, comma. Create that in a Word doc and you can copy that right into the tags in the area on YouTube and that will drop right in and separate them all. There is a maximum, I think it's about 25 tags, so don't go crazy. You don't have to use capitalization, but you can. Um, it's not going to make a big difference. You can add like a multi-word um, link, so multimedia videos. Um, you can add a, multi a phrase, not just single words. Okay, so what do you want people to do? Um, a lot of the things you want people to do at the end of the video is subscribe. Maybe you want to send them to your website. Maybe you want to send them to your Facebook page. Maybe you want them to comment on your video. Maybe you want them to watch another video. Be super clear at the end of your video. What do you want them to do? Most of our videos that we create, it ends with um, call us or email or here's our website at the very end of the video. So we add a graphic screen. What do you want them to do at the end of your video? Give them a really clear action step at the end of your videos so helpful, really improves your ROI for your videos. And then you know, oh, you just found me on YouTube, great ROI for spending more money on video or expending your resources on video. Um, you don't wanna overwhelm them, so give them one or two, a website and a phone number, a phone and an email. Don't try to give them five different things to view, to do at the end of the video. One or two at the most I recommend. If you're really a web company, go with email. If you want to do custom calls, get phone calls, or just send them to your website at the end of the video. Now, if you've linked your account and verified your account, you can actually go in there and have a click link at the end of your video, which is in the annotations. You can create an annotation around it, and you click it, and it goes right to your website. So that's really awesome. It's a really easy step for the viewer to get back to your website at the end of your video. So there's a lot of things you can do. It's not just about posting a video. There's a lot of annotations, tags, descriptions, and things you can do inside the video. Um, a couple of other things we're gonna talk about here. Um, you can monetize your videos. Obviously, it's gonna create ads, which can be a little frustrating. So some of our videos we monetize, some of them we don't. Um, if we're seeing that a video is getting a lot of views and a lot of trendings, we will actually go in and re-monetize it and try to get a little bit of AdSense dollars out of it. You're not going to make a lot of money unless you're getting hundreds of thousands of views. And then even then, it's maybe a couple hundred a month at most. It's not a ton of money unless you're really breaking the million 
viral video stuff, which is rare, just so you realize it's not that easy. Um, even for people in our industry, it's not easy to create viral videos. It's gotta be kind of your full-time thing, creating really fun videos. You get lucky every once in a while. Some people video a crash or video some crazy event and they get a ton of videos, but good luck repeating that. So don't feel bad if your videos don't have thousands and thousands of views. Um, just remember, you can brand your content, you can brand the videos, you can put links over the videos, which is the annotations. So when you're in the video manager and you go into annotations, you can create a link, you can kind of, what we use is little color bars, color banners over the videos. Uh, we try to make it as non-impactful to distracting you from the video. We add a click here to subscribe, little button over the videos. Um, so if you're shooting content, you wanna to try to leave top, bottom, left, right space to add those little annotations. So think ahead when you're creating your videos that side to side, if it's a horizontal video, see how there's like top space above me. So this is gonna be a really great space right now to add those annotations when I share this video back to YouTube. And I am gonna share this video back to YouTube, which is pretty cool about Periscope. So again, you can do a Periscope, you can save the video to your camera, and then you can upload that to YouTube a little bit of um, double point ROI for you on your videos. So this post was, um, or this video was based on a post by Buffer, uh, blog.buffer.com. I love them, I follow them. I love uh, Kissmetrics blog also. Um, great stuff that these companies are putting out. Scoop It does a great blog. If you have any questions for us, my email is jared at bhmedia.co, not .com. Our website is bhmedia.co. We help professionals um, and online people transform into experts, creating thought leaders. We work with businesses, professionals, all kinds of stuff. Um, check out the website. We'd love to hear back from you. Again, it's one of our first Periscopes, so thanks for your patience. I'm Jared. I'm going to be signing off now. Give us a ring. Here's our company, brickhousemedia.co. And uh, thanks for watching. Get out there, customize your YouTube channel, and good luck, and shoot me an email if you need. Thanks all.